Years ago, there was a study with college baseball players, and that study provides a nice illustration of what is meant by interleaved practice. In this study, the baseball players were divided into two groups, and both groups saw 45 baseball pitches during practice. Everyone saw 15 fastballs, 15 curveballs, and 15 change-ups. There was only one difference between the group, and that was the order in which they saw the pitches. In the group that we call block practice, they saw the pitches in blocks of 15, all 15 fastballs, then all 15 change-ups, and then all 15 curveballs. In the group that received interleaved practice, the different kinds of pitches were mixed up or interleaved, meaning the baseball players did not know what was coming next. And you can see what's coming. Uh, a while later, they took a test, and this test was like an actual baseball game. The batters did not know what kind of pitch to expect. And sure enough, the players who had received the interleaved practice did far better than the group that had received the blocked practice. And in short, interleaved practice provides people with an opportunity to do exactly what they have to do during the test. A lot of people have trouble in mathematics, and a lot of times people say, I do well in practice, but I struggle on the test. Well, one possible reason for that is that with practice, you often don't get an opportunity to do what they expect you to do on the test. So let me give you an example. Suppose you come across a word problem that says, a girl named Zoe is kayaking in Lake Erie, and she kayaks 15 kilometers east and 8 kilometers north. How far is she from her start? Well, that problem is hard to do because it doesn't the problem doesn't tell you how you should do it. In fact, you need the Pythagorean theorem. You might remember this from middle school. You know one leg of the triangle, you know another leg of the triangle, and you're asked for the hypotenuse. So the first step of that problem is to think to yourself, oh, this is the right triangle. I need to f this brings to mind the Pythagorean theorem. Only then, after you've chosen the strategy, can you execute the strategy. But with practice, students aren't given the chance to choose the strategy. Instead, you hear a lesson on the Pythagorean theorem, and then you see 20 problems all on the Pythagorean theorem. So students don't need to look at a problem and learn how to identify the appropriate strategy on the basis of the problem itself. Instead, when problems of the same kind are blocked together, students know the strategy in advance. So in effect, they're not given a chance to practice the very skill they're expected to know. And when test time comes, students may feel anxiety because suddenly they can't do these problems that seem so easy during practice, but in fact, we haven't given them a chance to practice doing that critical step, choosing the strategy and not just executing the strategy. Uh, in the last couple of years, I've run a couple of studies of interleaving in the classroom. We worked with nine or ten seventh grade math classes and their teachers, and we wanted to compare interleaved and blocked practice. So at the beginning of the study, we randomly assigned every student to one of two groups. One group received mostly blocked practice, and the other group received mostly interleaved practice. So what does that mean? With blocked practice, Almost all of the problems in a practice assignment are of the same kind. So for example, after a lesson on the graphing of a line, every student worked perhaps a dozen problems where they had to graph a line. With interleave practice, problems of different kinds are mixed together. And that means that students need to know not only how to do the problem, but they have to know when to do the problem. For example, if you're asked to solve for x, that instruction doesn't tell you how you should solve for x. There's three or four different ways to do that. And if students practice only one method at a time, they never have an opportunity to learn how to choose the appropriate method. So again, no one did only blocked or only interleaved. We merely varied the proportion from mostly blocked to mostly interleaved. This went on for several months. And then we divided everybody into two groups once again. Some people were tested one day later, others 30 days later. And in both one day and 30 days later, there was a large benefit of interleave practice. But the benefit actually grew much larger. For students who waited only one day, 
the difference was 84 versus 64 percent. For students who waited 30 days, the difference was 74 versus 42 percent. In other words, the longer they waited, the larger the benefit of interleaving. And that's important because the purpose of learning is to provide durable learning, long-lasting learning.